welcome to our morning devotional service. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Um, we believe the Lord God will bless you before you go because um, that is his promise. It is in his presence that there is fullness of joy. So certainly the Lord will rejoice our hearts before we go today. We want to thank God for being in our midst, and we also want to appreciate uh, Brother Mike for that organ prelude, and the choir just sang, I love him. May the Lord help us all to love him and love him fully. We equally want to welcome our internet audience. This is Apostle Faith Church. We are located at number 13, Penn Hill Road, and that is in Bexley, DA5. 3EP. If you live locally, we'll be glad to have you around to worship with us one of these days, or if you are visiting, you're very much welcome to come and worship with us. Um, otherwise, it's, uh, it always gladdens our hearts to know that there are many of you out there that um, always watch our services, and we believe that as God is blessing us here, he is equally blessing you over there. We are now going to sing together as a congregation. And the first song we'll be singing is CGS 683. CGS 683. And Sister Florence Wolabi is our song leader for this morning. God bless you. Furthermore, we sing him number 658. That's
Amen. Amen. Furthermore, we sing 664. Amazing Grace, we sing only one verse. song before prayer will be keep on believing verse one and last standing please
O gracious Savior, our most heavenly Father, we are grateful for an opportunity to approach a place of safety, a place of refuge, a place where your grace is sufficient to all of our needs. Lord, for this we glorify your name. We bless your name that has been with us right from the inception of this year. Oh, Lord, we thank you for a new month. Amen. Lord, we glorify your name. Amen. We thank you for the many blessings you've showered upon our lives. But most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you for that word of God, a word of assurance that you will answer prayer. Oh, yes. We know that, oh God, some may be here with burdens, but you've given us assurance that you are a burden bearer. Yeah. Lord, for this we glorify your name. Amen. Lord, here we come again. We have come into your sanctuary to hear your word. We pray that this morning, even today, that you will speak through your oracle. Amen. Lord, we commit the preacher of today into your mighty hand yes. that he will hear from you. Amen. And as your word will come forth, it will come with power. Amen. Power to change our lives. Amen. Power to save souls. Amen. Power to sanctify. Amen. And fill with the mighty baptism of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Power, oh God, to heal the sick. Amen. We know there are some that couldn't make it to service today. Lord, but your word will reach them out Amen. there. To heal them. Amen. To strengthen them. Amen. And to comfort them. Amen. Lord, we pray also for our pastor, wherever he may be, we pray that you will be with him. Amen. And wherever the children of God are gathered, Lord, that you will be in their service. Amen. As you are with us here, we pray that we will return Amen. with shouts of joy. Amen. Thank you, O oh Lord, because we know that you have answered since we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We will now listen to the first special, which is um, an anthem. It's always darkest before the dawn. And then after that, Brother Sam Oretuga will um, bring Bible reading from Psalm 73, from verse 23 to verse 28. And then we'll have the last special, which is going to be a duet, Only Believe. And then the word of exhortation to be brought today by Brother Ope. God bless you all.
Our scripture reading for this morning devotional service will be found in the book of Psalm 73, starting from verse 23 to 28. Psalm 73, verse 23. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holding me by my right hand. 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, Amen. and afterward receive me to glory. Amen. 25. Whom I have, whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. 26. My flesh and my heart fail it, but God is, is the strength of my heart, Amen. and my portion forever. Amen. 27. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a warring from thee. 28 and the last. But it is good for me to draw near to God. Yes. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. Amen. Little flock, what's end? 
our Bible to the Gospel according to St. John chapter 21, please. Gospel according to St. John chapter 21, and I will read verse 6. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Amen. They cast, therefore, and now they were not able to draw, to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Jesus wants us to cast the net on a different direction yes. this morning, yes. on the right hand. Yes. And if we look at the concept of right hand, if you have, if you are right-handed, that is your strongest hand, and you will make you make exploit with that hand. You do well when you use that hand. And if you are left-handed, that is your strongest hand. When you, uh, you do well also with that left hand, because it is how God designed it to be. Um, at this point in time, we realize that Jesus had passed away, and the disciples were at a very depressed and, and gloomy mood because of the horrific events um, that led to and also culminating in the death of Jesus Christ. So many of us, there may be events also that are having some depressant spectrum, some depressant um, Atmosphere. There may be things that are be clouding also our judgment, be clouding um, our vision. There may be things that uh, you know are unexpected, but they are still persisting. And things you have prayed over and over and over and over, you wake up, you still see them. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, these disciples, it was not just a matter of the fact that they, that they, as soon as they went into the sea, Jesus appeared. He gave them a chance to toil. He gave them a chance to labor so that when the victory will be won, then they will highly appreciate it. I think that will be, if we put that in perspective, that may be also the situation that we find ourselves, that we, God, has, God gave us a chance to try it and labor and try different ways without meeting the desired outcome so that when Jesus will lift the burden, then we will know and give glory to him. Uh, as it were, the, the disciples were distraught about all the endeavor after they followed somebody for about three and a half years and all of a sudden the person had disappeared from them and now they wanted something else that would uh, make them feel good. But sometimes, you know, when we come to church like this and many things can come into our heart that we forget what the message is all about, that it is for the preacher as well as for the listeners. Because none of us um, preaching here will stand up to say that we have gotten the victory over everything. It doesn't happen like that, no. Far be it from the truth. In some cases, you discover that we, we have more than uh, we can tell. And it's like uh, our people say that what the, uh, the good sees and keep quiet, the chicken sees the same thing and makes so much loud noise. So, but we thank God for Jesus Christ Amen. that from day to day, 
He gives his people the truth and they stand to continue to declare the truth. The truth is declared for the preacher and the truth is also declared for the listener because uh, that is how Jesus designed it to be. You remember that after when he was hanging in the cross that the congregation, people from the crowd went and told him, if you are the son of God, ah, call heaven to fall. Why don't you save yourself? He had the power to do so. But uh, he decided that the course of events must go through so that you and I may have victory. Yeah. So in the same way, we don't have the power to, to save ourselves. But the ultimate dependency is still on that Jesus Christ. Amen. And that ha the way he wants to fashion it is entirely uh, up to him. You may feel the moisture hanging. We may feel the thick cloud that's, that makes it difficult for us to see who is talking to us, for us to see who is calling us. When we stand here, you have to look far beyond the person that is speaking into the rims of the person that sent him. When we pass through the person that is speaking, we will then reach the person that sends the message. But if we leave it beyond with, within the person that is speaking, then we have some limitations. This was the situation with the, the, the disciples. They did see Jesus afar, but they did not recognize him, even though they, he was with them for a long time. Because many things were going through their mind. And many things were going through their thoughts. Uh, if we go back to the Bible reading that we had, uh, the psalmist also had gone through a situation like that. Um, I would, that's Psalm 73. For verse 3. Okay, let's start from verse 2. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. The Sami was in a, a similar situation as well. We find ourselves there from time to time, when our feet is almost slipping off, as if we were mud, walking on a mud slide. And uh, we see you turn around to your left, you may turn around to your right, and you in front of you, or you turn, you turn to your back, you see others, and you think that they are doing really, really well. And you go back and, get, and give commiseration to yourself. You, you get yourself into self-pity. My brother and sisters, you need to see beyond the cloth. Yeah. You need to see beyond the person. If you need to see, you need, you need, if, if you were living together, you need to listen to the stories. Then you will know that all of us, our dependency is on God. Yeah. And that's why the psalmist after he had looked at all of this, he went back to himself. Verse 6, Therefore the pride compassed them about as a, as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. For some people, you see that and then it's an overreaction about what you have seen, what you perceive, what your judgments are. Whereas, it is all but empty. And then, when the psalmist has gone through all of this, his conclusion was, verse 25, Whom have I in heaven but thee? But there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. 
That is why we, we are here. That's why we need God. And uh, that could be a situation in the workplace. And in that case, you are not dealing with your brother and sister in the church. It's a completely different environment. And it might even be the person that you feel is giving you the listening ears. Is that person that is the stumbling block. We made that judgment. It has happened to me before. And every time I was going to that person thinking I was getting help, I was, it was, the person was listening to me. I'm going to, it, it, the person will intervene on my behalf. But truly, it came to pass at the final judgment that she was the catalyst. So, who have we in this world but God? And who in heaven but him? I had this fishnet sermon come through to me this week. Because when I was given this assignment, I was praying for God to give me the message. Many things, God was leading me in one direction, in one direction. But that didn't happen this week. I say it is good. And that, that led me to have this sermon on the fishing net, on the, on the fish net, that whatever the case, we must throw our net Amen. on the right side. I, I, ha I, I had this um, old phone. I've used it for a long time, in many years. Um, <laughs> I'm not privy to this, the, let, the latest Samsung, no. And neither am I privy to the latest, latest iPhone, no. Or Huawei, no. I, I had a, a Samsung A6, and that has lasted me for many years. And I decided, oh, let me change to I, I, someone. I saw a very cheap Motorola. I said, yeah, let me have that. And I wanted now to change from Asus to Motorola. And, and some of you will be sitting down here and say, what was Uncle doing with that? But that is the phone that I had. So then uh, I discovered, well, the basic thing that I used to have from the other one, I can't have. Um, I exported my contact into it, but people will phone, the, num the, names, the numbers will come, but the names didn't come. And I will be searching to look for somebody, uh, somebody's name I can't find. I said, well, where is, where is the one that I was using? That's the one that I want now. I want to go back to the old one, what I am sure of. So, and I, because there was no way for me to know where it was, I have emptied, I've taken this, the SIM card out and put in the new one. There's no way to ring. Because in the past, it used to be, I can't find it. Okay, let me ring it, then I will know where it is. Now, I couldn't ring. I know I have my work bag every day. I take it to work. I was that, was it at home? Was it at work? Where was it? I searched everywhere. The work bag, I searched. Many times, I couldn't find the phone. And... I said, okay, let me empty it and check. So when I go to the work bag, because my man was still saying, just still check that bag. So I would do like that, with huge, shop, huge loads of paper, I would just grab it like that. And the phone would hide between the papers. And I said, oh, it's not there. I put it back. And I would start searching again, because now this one will not give me sat nap. I don't know where, I'm, I can't get my way around. I said, how must I did this phone? So yesterday I wanted to go somewhere. I needed the phone badly. The night before, I said, okay, this back. Jesus told disciples to cast the net on the right-hand side. There must have been a reason why he told them to cast it on the right-hand side. He told them to do things differently. He must, he must, there must have been a reason. Now, I'm going to search this bag because my mind is still in this bag. I'm going to search it differently this time. So I decided 
to tip the back over mm -hmm. and then take the paper one by one and all of a sudden see like a little mouse there, the phone. I say, oh, glory be to God. So I have, I have now thrown my net on the right hand side. And I had the caught. I caught the fishes that I could not now uh, carry. I think it might look very simplistic, but it's the reality of life. That from time to time, let's listen to that silent spirit of God asking yes. us to do something yes. differently. Yes. Asking us to throw our, 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 our net on the right side. We, we, you have, we have prayed. You have prayed a long prayer. You have come a long way. But just that tiny margin to victory. And God expects something different. For some of us, there is the tendency to believe that prayer is one-sided, which is never, it, it has never been and will never be. It is a two-way communication. If you, if you continue to uh, as I say, rap or Talk, 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 no, non-stop. God may decide to keep quiet and say, well, continue. You are my child. But one thing God will always do is give us the opportunity to come back and talk to him, and which is a privilege. Even when we have discussed and talked to him and talk, 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 he said, well, you are not allowing me to speak. If you were to allow me to speak, maybe by now it could have been over. But sometimes we don't allow God to speak. We don't let him in. We feel that we know it. The disciples also felt that they knew how to do a fishing. And they can do it their own way. The communication, prayer is a two-way communication. I mean, I've given you my testimony before when I was looking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Many times I would come and I would bang myself, I would pray, 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 and nothing happened. Many people would surround me and pray for me that I would get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It didn't happen. One day I was on my own on the altar and wrestling and wrestling and wrestling and wrestling, and God said to me, go and take that Grace watch on your hand and put in the dustbin. I was not, I wasn't sure what was the what what was the connection. But I obeyed. And I, when I think back, it's the reflection of that. In the whole of my life, nothing was even from my youth, secondary school, I will leave all my pocket money so that I can have a race watch. But since that day, God said, take it up. It was a golden wristwatch. I'm not saying that you can't wear your golden watch, but I'm telling you what God said to me. Amen. And I took it up. I put it in the bin. I went outside. People didn't know where I went. I put it in the bin. I came back to the altar, and I prayed. Glory be to God. Amen. It wasn't long. I spoke in tongues. Amen. And I, 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 some of our, my brothers were there. And they rejoiced with me that day. Amen. Because I could not, the, 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 the force that came on me was beyond me. Yeah. And how my tongue twisted, I, it was beyond me. And glory be to God. Amen. So God that day directed me to Throw my net on the right hand side. Amen. It didn't mean that I wasn't throwing the net. I was throwing and throwing and throwing, but it wasn't in the right direction. And though that day that God gave me the grace to listen to Him, to be calm, so that the, the still, gentle voice of God can speak, right. it was the day that I broke through. Amen. Amen. It was the same thing with the disciples who were the um, who were 
despondent at this time. The disciples whose, whose feet were shaking. It was the same thing. Similar situation that Jesus came and said to them, throw your net on the right side, on the right hand side. They, they didn't know who was. They were not able to really perceive that was him because you know that he had passed on. But they obeyed. So there may be some certain conceptions within us, but God is the ultimate. Yeah, yeah. The ultimate power, the ultimate answer, the ultimate solution. Yeah. Only if we allow him the chance. Only if we obey that little simple still voice. God is never violent. When you have your internal reaction to be violent, it's not God, and it's not godly. Many of us fall into that trap, like one of our brothers testified during the testimony. That is not God, that is not godly. We will always look back in shame and say, ha, ah, is it me? Because I, I remember one day I was driving, and I really was, I think I was late. But there was an impetus behind me. There was a spur behind me that I must, I must be in front. I, 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 you know, the way I drove that day, mm, I, can, I, I sense myself going to the right hand, turning, doing this, doing that, doing that, doing that, and reaching the front. Then God spoke to me. Ha <laughs> Reverend uh -huh. How would you defend yourself if you are arrested by the police? Who would you say you are? Whose child would you say you are? I listened. My brother and sister, since that day, no such driving. Because I was, so many things was going through my mind. I said, ah, ah. what came on? You know, it said, it said Satan can come and put himself as the angel of light and, you know, propel you into destruction. And you cannot, you, you can't help yourself. But, God will not allow it to happen on the first instance because of the love of God. He won't allow it to happen first time and then you are finished. If you are his own, he will always bring that time to give you a warning. He will always give you a chance to repent because he's God. So for every sinner sitting here today, Repentance is key. That God gives that one more chance for you to repent. For you who is saved and you have got you are out of the way, or you did something nasty that I did. I can assure you, by the grace of God and by the authority of God, that God is not a one-time killer. He doesn't, he's not like that. He's a God of mercy, full of compassion. He will always point out our mistakes. And since God pointed out that mistake to me that day, I drive as a gentle lamb. I didn't commit sin, but I could have murdered somebody. Many things could have happened, and my integrity would have been in ruin, in tattered. The first integrity that would have been ruined is the integrity of the child of God. Forget about everything else. And that is what binds us to be Christians. That is what makes us godly. That is what makes us different. We forget about any title that you, you may be, you may be Dr. D's. You may be that. You may be that. I was listening to a radio program 
and uh, this guy, he, he, his name is Andrew. He, he's a Jew, so he, he said he went to uh, he went to a party, one of the Jewish um, celebrations, and he really wanted to puff off and feel pompous. He, he said uh, he called him. They call, he, he put his title down as Doctor Andrew. I don't want to mention the surname. But uh, some of us, sometimes you, you are in that situation, you see many other people uh, being called doctor, or some others being called professor, and you just want to join the group, and then you go and put down the wrong title. Some people, some people do so that you can be doctor as well. And uh, uh, so his colleagues say, so, so that day you were Andrew, doctor, and he said, yes. I said, okay. And afterwards, it, all, it was all finished. But as a child of God, where do you place yourself? When, 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 when all those vibes come against you, when all those vibes present themselves as the best thing at, of the moment, When they present themselves as nothing else can survive that moment, how do you react? You join in, or you have discipline, or you have principles. Have you ever been, if you've been to funerals or celebrations, that is African man, the beatings, the music that will come out, it will tear your body apart if you, as if you, would, if you don't dance it as if your body will never remain. Ah, and the, and, and the singers will sing as if tomorrow is, no, is, is not going to come. It takes God to behave. Oh. It takes God to be yourself. It takes God to be a Christian yes. on that particular moment. Yes. When my mother died, my 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 grand my my grand my sorry my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, we were like the chief host. You appear, and you will see. The dancing that would turn like that and would turn like that and would turn like that and would turn like that, like the wind. Ah, ah. Can't you slow down? Somebody is dead. And, and then I'll be marching like as if I'm a school child. I'll still go like that. I'll still go like that. You know, people say your reputation is what people say behind you. And I'm, when, when I consider, hey, if I don't hold myself together, uh, tomorrow will be a different story, and I will hold myself together and will stand like that, if, uh, and then stand like that, and then continue the way God, God, the way God told me. I don't know how God tells you whether we have different God. A child, my my one of my sisters, we keep talking about um, when we see people that are saved, our children that are saved, and they're doing the things that are unseemly. He said, ah, whether it's a different salvation. I'm telling you how God guides me and how God guided me to the extent that one of the people will come and, and hold me like that and say, ah, what is going on? I say, no, let me, let, me, let, let me do the way I know, the way God guides me. You know, because it's so simple to lose the momentum yeah. and it's so simple to lose your cool. Yeah. And before long, You start, you, you start little, you increase in, in momentum, you increase in dimension, you increase, you increase, until you become mad. You can even do more than the people, more than others. And what then happens? Were you listening? Is that you casting your net on the right side? Is that the way to pray? Is that the way to attract others? May God have mercy on us. Amen. In 
important for us to have teachable characteristics. It's very important. Listening ears, listening to God. Because it is very, very possible Jesus could appear to the disciples as it were and told them, cast your net on the right hand side. And they say, who are you? You remember that also in Luke chapter 5, this similar story happened when Jesus was alive, when the disciples had already gone and uh, toiled all night and they couldn't catch anything. And Jesus appeared and asked them if they've had any catch. And they said, no, master. And the master told them to dip their net. And when they obeyed Jesus, they came back. They could not draw the, the, the nets. They had, many people had to come. But it's the same Jesus that appeared here. So the reflection of what God has done for you in the past. How does it play a part in your behavior in the future and present? So these disciples, they could easily have run into rumbles. They could have, they could, you know, they had the opportunity to, to fetch a lot of water and pour in his face. And say, ah, who do you think you are? That's what we've been doing all this time. But thank God, they obeyed. And the, and the Bible tells us that they caught more than they themselves could drag out. Some of us, even when our children are speaking to us, we don't want to listen. We, it's, it's not important because he's our children. Somebody, I, we, we were just a, a mere um, conversation that we were having. Uh, he told me we were just talking about things and, you know, he came to my place of work, so we were just having discussion. He said to me, sir, you know what? We are, we are mentally damaged. I said, why? He said, because the way we were brought up, you dare not say your own because you will be punished throughout the day. The, the, the way, uh, you see, you, see, you, you, said, you speak up, you were the naughtiest boy. He said, when I used to speak up, I was the naughtiest boy. And so, so like that, the, the suppression, the tendencies to, to come to, bring you down and bring you down and bring you down and bring you down and bring you down as we were growing up. It just presents you a different person from who you could have been. So some of us sometimes we don't want to listen because it's our children. There's no, there's no reason. Give, let's give them a room. They may talk sense or nonsense. You pick what you feel is the good one. It's, it is it's, it's useful. Yeah. We were having our minister's review conference there and talk about how one of our preachers covered a lot of grounds uh, because it's straight English. And everyone was thinking, oh, because we have to translate from our mother tongue into English and then we have to do it differently. I said, well, are they, you know, there was that presumption that I don't, whereas I do. I do the same. I, t I have to translate. When, when, when thoughts come, you translate from, from, I translate from ethic into English before then it comes into the tongue to come out. It may take split seconds, like a computer, but that is, it, that is the way it is. And some of the things, the corrections my children and my, and my students gave to me, they are, they are pretty useful for life. So, so listening before we cast our net on the right direction is very important. And I gave them a very, a very, a, I, I thought it was only me. I said, well, I was in the classroom teaching and I said to, to my student, I can hear the smell. And I said, sir, how can you hear the smell? 
I say, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, I can smell. That's, you have the sense of hearing is from the ear. You have the sense of smelling it to the nose. You have the sense of touch is your hand. I can hear the smell. What, use, what, what English was that? And I thought I was the only one. I went there. I heard my Yoruba friend say that it's the same translation or same word for hearing and for smelling. And then two weeks ago, I hear an Igbo man say, I, I hear the smell. I say, hey, that's the same mistake that I made. It's nothing like that. Ah. But a child corrected me, and it was useful. And I learned it. Till then, I can't make that mistake again. So how much more our Heavenly Father? How do, how do we spend time, praying time, listening time, absorbing time, reflecting? May God help us to do things Amen. differently. May God help us to listen. Amen. If we, the lost coins, it was the same reasonable perspective. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 8. Either the woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose the one piece, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle to, and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. This is this the parable of the lost coins. If you if you look, there were so many actions that Jesus highlighted there in the attitude of this woman, in her prayers, in her contemplation, in her search for the lost coins. The first thing I would have um, search Remember, I told you the story of the bag. The first thing was similar. Searching generally. Light a candle. Search generally. These were about doing things differently. She could have just stopped by lighting the candle and searching. I could have stopped. By continue, you know, I've searched that bag many times, searched everywhere, and I could have stopped. But God just wanted me to continue. The same thing with this woman. She lit the candle, she searched, and she couldn't find. She took a different step. She took a broom and swept the house doing things differently, listening to God, casting our net on the right-hand side. So then she still couldn't find it. You know, the houses in those days were not this privileged carpet that we have. They were mud houses. I doubt if there were cement for them. And I, um, for those of you that don't know how to live in a mud house, it's a, it's a good experience. You see how, when you see it, having lived there myself, having cleaned it every day, having seen my mother maintain it, you will see what it means to keep it going. It's a lot of work. She must have, after she, she, she cleaned it, swept it, must have been a pile of rubbles or a pile of dust and sand. Then she still wanted to do things differently. I can, I can imagine her, you know, doing like that for, with the sun, the pile of sun, and looking for the lost coin. Just doing something differently. Just doing something differently. Until she find it. Until she found it. God lives. Amen. He loves us. Amen. He wants us Amen. to do things differently. Amen. 
casting our, our net on the right hand side and he will give us victory. Amen. The altar is open. God bless you. Thank you, dear Lord. We thank you because you are a God of a second chance. This morning, O oh Lord, you have given us yet another opportunity. Perhaps if we do it differently, we will get a different result. And your will, O oh Lord, will be done in our lives. We are praying, gracious Father, that today you will help us, Amen. saints and sinners, Amen. that we will re-examine ourselves, O oh Lord, and we ask to know that which is of perfect will. Amen. And as you reveal to us, O oh Lord, help us to be doers of it. Amen. Save souls today, dear Lord. Amen. As many as we cry out to thee from the bottom of their heart, Lord, reveal yourself to them. Amen. Perhaps there are people that have been looking up to you, seeking for their sanctification and baptism of Holy Ghost. Today you want to sanctify them. Amen. Today you want to baptize them. Amen. Oh Lord, please do it. Amen. Whatever those problems or issues may be that we have been banging our heads over for, from time immemorial, today you want us to treat things differently. Amen. Help us, dear Lord God. Amen. Let us cast our net on the right side Amen. and let us reap great rewards. Amen. Thank you for answered prayers, O oh Lord, you, Lord, as we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.